Hello there, I'm Mikko from the Body of Christ and welcome to another Leadership Reflection. Today our topic is a safe harbor or a safe place. A topic that I'm not an expert in and I say, and I say that straight, straight up from. But I want to learn that because I feel it's important and I hope you also want to learn that. So let's try to do that together in this reflective session. So this, uh, to give you some context, this is part of the so-called process or the Proverbs process, where here's the leader, here's the team, and here's God at the apex. And what this uh, safe environment facilitates, or what this function is, is to help God to speak to your team and throw your team to you. Because um, if there is no safe place, then the team will be aligned to censor itself and to prevent this access of wisdom from the team to you. So it is very important. And this goes very well together with our earlier reflections concerning active listening, or especially. So I recommend you check that teaching out as well, because it's very connected with this one. So, what is safe place and what it is not? Um, safe place has to has a lot to do with the culture of your organization and especially culture within your team. And here we will assume that you are in a leadership position within a team and you have some members within that team. And we all or at least most of us come from different cultures and many of those cultures have given us this message that it's not really okay to be you. It's and you're like problematic, but because you provide results, we accept you. So that's a, maybe a, a too harsh way to put it or like too extreme way to say but what I'm saying is that safe place is something that's kind of contrary to our culture or to the environments many of us grew up in and speaking from experience here and nothing against my parents in that sense although in my family we didn't have much of a culture of speaking about for example about feelings speaking about our thoughts and intuitions and ideas uh, it was more of a silent culture in that sense so there was no open place open forum to speak about these things in respect and love and honesty those are the conditions you know this is not like do whatever you want this is uh, how to construct a healthy environment for change and growth but anyway many of us come from this sort of broken background where we um how we operate is this thing focused or project focused and really like when we got to the table what's the focus here oh let's let's get this job done here so that everyone's focusing on this and it's like a how i would put it is like you know Two people were feeling lonely and they say, hey, let's be lonely together. <laughs> so they exist in parallel, but there's this wall over here that only thing they share with each other really is the things, things on the table, projects and issues and, you know, this sort of, really, how do you call it? formal matters, I guess, you know, but a large part of the person is detached somewhere and is, is withheld from the conversation, from the unity, from the thing in general. And the unity between these people is just, it's only about the project. Uh, but that's not how we want it. But how do we transform this sort of culture into a safe culture 
I personally believe that it starts with a healthy leader. And that if you're not a healthy leader yet, then you need to connect to one. But the root, the first healthy leader is Jesus. And once God touches a person and gives them that sense of security, sense of like, like deep understanding that you're loved, you're valuable, uh, God accepts you as who you are, you know, that's sort of very safe, strong foundation. Then you can kind of forget yourself for a moment because you know that God doesn't forget you and you can focus on other people instead. So you, you will be able to create this space where you accept people. They are not that fresh to you. Their ideas, different ideas or different thoughts and concepts and ways of perceiving the world are no longer a threat to you because you feel safe. So you can start to bring that safety into that environment. So then they can get that experience that whatever they think or whatever they feel, they're valuable and they're loved and they're accepted by God as well as you. So they can start getting that sense of security. And really that sense of security is a strong place for, for growth. It's like the soil that it allows things, first of all, it allows the facts to surface. So let's say this person here has a fact that's a challenging fact. Maybe they didn't do as well as they could have, or there's some issues in their team. And, but now because this is a safe environment, they can say, Hey, I'm really struggling with this issue. Can you help me? Can we get some answers here? Like <clears throat> from an honest perspective, or maybe there's an issue within this team, you know, but nobody dares to say it because there's no safe environment. But if there is a safe environment, they can be like, Hey, I see, see that that what you did there is that like okay or like leader did you like have you considered this and your actions might be coming from this thing or oh, there's a wound here or whatever you know things get surfaced quickly but they also can be dealt with in love so that's like getting the soil clean and then the leader because he has shown that he cares about the person because he has created that safe place um, and expressed God's love. Then he can speak into their life and they can say, hey, I really appreciate you and what, you, what you're doing is valuable. You're valuable. But I see this issue in your life. Like, let's say this issue about your relationships, for example. Um, and I see a pattern there that can be a dangerous pattern. I'm worried that, that that will take you to a wrong direction. Like, are you willing to make a change here? Because I feel this is really important, even really important for you staying in the team. Because this can really ruin not only you, but also people around you. So can we work on this together? Yeah. So that's kind of by first building that trust and having the authority to speak into their life out of love gives them access to deal with those issues that otherwise are completely separate and sealed into this area of like, that's my private thing. But in many organizations, that private thing can really deteriorate the whole thing, uh, the whole project. So if we only keep attention to this project thing here, then uh, those things that sneak behind this all dark stuff here that's not visible to anyone, that's my private world. Then that private world, let's say you have a marriage issue here. Your marriage is going sour. Now you start having some mental issues because of that and you can't sleep anymore. Now, is that not going to affect the project? Yes, it is. Should that have been handled earlier? Yes, it should have. Could it have been handled earlier? 
Well, only if you made it visible. Only if you are transparent and honest in that team. Because they cannot help you if anything they don't know even exists. So, having this sort of dark culture here is, uh, in the long term, it's, it's damaging to you, to your team, as well as to the project you find so important. But really, the people here are important, and this environment is important. So, if you want the long term, healthy, strong team and healthy, strong business, you need to work on the people and you need to work on this relationship here and the trust, and the safety. And the major thing facilitated by this safe environment and the major goal in that is honesty. A value that, especially in this training, is especially important, but somewhat overlooked, I guess. Because there's a lot of accepted lying in our culture. Uh, what is that? Well, for example, if someone comes to you and says, how are you? What are they expecting to hear? Often they're expecting to hear, good. They're expecting to hear a lie. Even if you're not doing good, you should be saying that you feel good. That's the culture. That's the deal. That's the, how the protocol works. Or if you go to church, there's the pews, and you sit there, what are you expected to do? Well, depending on the church you go to, you might be expected to say amen or glory, hallelujah, or, you know, um, praise the Lord, you know. But if you have bitterness in your heart, and really you're angry towards the Lord for some reason, you've been hurt by something and you have protected that towards the Lord. What do you expect to say? Praise hallelujah, you know. <laughs> Those things don't belong here, kind of thing. So that's again, you're expected to lie. So honesty is not so um, sort of, we cannot take it for granted, really. Because there is lying. There's good lying going on. But what lying, even good lying, causes within a team setting is that because you as a leader are very much dependent on the information that your team gives you because they are closer to the action and they have the details. You're just leading the big picture. You're just seeing everything's going to the right direction. But you cannot be there in every meeting and in every room, in every minor project see what's going on and get all the details, read all the documentation and that sort, that kind of thing. So you're really dependent on them giving your valid and valuable and good information. So they're giving you information, but if you have a culture of dishonesty, they leave out some things that is, he doesn't need to hear about these things, or maybe they add some things so that they will look better. So yeah. It didn't go really that well, but it's, it's, let's emphasize this point a little bit more, you know. So what happens? Because you don't, you cannot verify these things right away. What happens? You take all that data in to your decision-making process, and then you direct the organization from that data you have. But now you're directing the organization based on faulty or misled data. So can you direct it, be as accurate or good? Often what happens is, is like, oh, I thought we were going in that direction. Why didn't nobody tell me about this problem, you know? Like, didn't anyone know? And then it's like, well, I... you tell him, <laughs> kind of thing, you know. Uh, issues get a lot of space in that dark spot to get larger. And then when things cannot be holden anymore within that box, then then the boss gets to hear about it. And then everyone hides behind a corner, you know. Uh, that's not the culture you want. And that's not the culture we want here. We need honest 
information while it's it's new and fresh and things can be dealt with it's really disrespectful res- disrespectful towards your leader to give him false information because he's trying to do his job and lead that team and you're messing things up with your dishonesty so let's try to be honest but it starts by again it starts with the leader being honest the leader setting the example and setting the expectation but in this context, in this culture, honesty is something that, if not corrected, like you should find team members that are honest and and let the others go. But that's a separate thing. Let's let's talk about that later. Uh, so, to recap, safe place is culture environment. Consisting of expectations and certain boundaries and rules that give space that whatever God speaks to you, whatever issues there are, you need to share them openly for the team and honestly and be transparent with the expectation that we, especially the leader, will still love you, will still accept you, We'll deal with those issues respectfully and we'll exercise like God leadership and love in that context and really requires the of maturity from the leader. But as a reward for that maturity and placing importance on the people, relationships and their insights, their, that, their issues, what you get as a reward is this. God can speak to your team and God can speak to you through your team. Otherwise, it doesn't work that way. Plus, you get into a lot of more trouble. But really, this is not only about leading an organization. This is also, for example, in your family, in your relationships. Do you want to exist lonely together in parallel? Or do you want to start sharing your life with others? other safe people and and like being more real more transparent with others uh, but how do you get there I say the first thing is here you get the love of God hopefully you have a person that can help you in that experience like be patient with you be transparent with you show how this honest thing is done show how this so in leadership is done. But it all starts from God. And it all starts from someone's relationship with God. And it gets stronger when you get a strong relationship with God. So I guess that's everything I want to share with you today. I hope you find this interesting. And I would like to hear your thoughts yourself. Like, have you managed to create this sort of environment in some of your teams or settings? And what kind of challenges did you face uh, creating that? And what were the major, like, breakthroughs or revelations that helped you get there? Um, It would be very interesting and important to hear your thoughts and insights in this area. And like I said... I don't claim to know any of this stuff. I would really just like to learn this for real. So if you can help me, that would be awesome. Anyway, see you next time.